How's everybody doing today? I see the real Christians showed up to church this morning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know we kept y'all late, but God, it was so good. Amen? It was so good. Everybody did such a great job. And so uh, thank you. Um, feel the presence of God. And so um, thank y'all for coming back today. The Coles get the award for the day. I think they went home, drank coffee, slept for three minutes, turned around and came back home. They live an hour away, so that's um, you know they get the they get the award today. So, but thank you all for coming back. Thank you for uh, not only ringing in the new year last night with uh, worship and the word, but coming back this morning to start your year off right. Amen. Amen. And I do ask for your prayers. I'm like Noah. I'm not feeling well today. But I am pushing forward. Uh, there's too many times the enemy has come against me um, health-wise, and I haven't been able to finish a series a couple of times. And I was like, how dare you try to keep me from starting a series? Amen. So um, <clears throat> I'm pushing through, and I guarantee you, after this, I will go home, take a lot of drugs, and go to bed, okay, <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, but good morning, and welcome to 2023, amen, at the EWC, and so, um, thank you for starting your year off with us, and because um, how you start your year is how you should finish your year, and so if we continually go in that pattern of, I want the Lord first, first, First in my life, first in my relationships, first in my finances, first in my family. If you put him first, you'll see the benefits of it. Amen? Amen. So we want to welcome those that are watching on EWC Live right now. Can you all give them a hand clap make them wish they were here? We love you guys, and uh, we, we hope that you can join us someday soon. Uh, we're right here at 6801 Weber Road in Corpus Christi, Texas, right on the frontage road between Saratoga and Yorktown. And uh, we have a place for you. We would love for you to join us for one of our services, Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. or Wednesday night at 7 p.m., which is our Reconnect service. And so uh, that's where we have different people in our church come and speak, and they just do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And uh, so if you'd also uh, like to do what our people just did, and that's to give, uh, the number will appear, me, appear right below me here on the screen. Or if you're watching on your phone, your mobile device, your um, your TV, however, YouTube, whatever you're watching on, uh, there's a number right there, 361-336-0500, and that's the text to give number, and it's so simple, it's so easy, and uh, God will do some great things in your life. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'd also like to welcome some people we got all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma, amen? So when I call your name out, stand up so people can see your pretty face, all right? Michael, Angel, come on, stand up. There's, I didn't get to say hello to Angel last night. He wasn't on the front row. So Michael and Angel, John Mark, Chloe, stand up. London, Tori, Adrian, Anna, thank you all for being here. We love you guys. Y'all can sit down. You can sit down. When y'all think about them, y'all be praying for them. They're going back for their next semester uh, in about a week. And uh, so uh, some of them need a miracle in their finances. You know, some, you know, some, of, them, some of them have a, a paid way. Some of them don't. Some of them you know, work a couple of jobs just to make sure that they have uh, their, their tuition met. And so y'all be praying for them. And be praying that God supplies. Amen? Amen. So, um, but thank y'all uh, for being here. So we're starting a brand new series this morning uh, called the Reset Button. The Reset Button. In fact, every one of y'all should have gotten a little Reset Button. Let me hear them. Let me hear them. You know you want to do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Stop. <laughs> Melissa was like, you really want to hand those out before service? And so, yeah, I do. I do. If you didn't get one, uh, lift your hand. The ushers will bring you one. We have some left over. But it's just a good reminder um, that the series that we're doing this year, and I, I chose these. These are actually animal training things. And so, women, if you click them and your husband sits down, <laughs> you know you're doing a good job. Amen? <laughs> but, uh, but it reminded me of when you reset a computer. You ever reset a computer? Yeah. And you hold your button in and you let it out? And so that's why I wanted to get these because that's just a reminder. And so 
hang on to these, put them in your car, hang them on your rear view mirror, or whatever, put them somewhere so you can see it. So if a time comes where you're struggling and you feel yourself slipping back into 2022, yeah. you grab your little reset button as a reminder. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I need to do better. I need to do something different. I need to do something that will glorify God. Amen? So um, that's the reset. Because God would rather you reset than regret. Amen? Amen? So this month um, we are uh, pushing the reset button on four different areas in our lives. Our families, our faith, our finances, and our fitness. Those are the four areas that we're going to reset the... The, the button uh, in our lives. Now, uh, January has five Sundays, and so we're doing a foundational message today, and so next Sunday we're going to get into one of these topics. I'm not going to tell you which topic we're doing every Sunday, because I don't want you to be like, well, that one doesn't apply to me. Well, you can't say the word doesn't apply to you, because there's always something that you can get out of the word. I will say fitness will probably be last, because I'm praying about it. I might preach a message from a bike for 45 minutes. I might get my, my indoor bike up here and preach to y'all. We'll see. Y'all pr y'all pray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> y'all pay to see that, wouldn't y'all? And so, <laughs> but there's a couple of ways we're going to help you focus on resetting these areas, um, and it's not only by the word, but it's also through a fast. So today we are implementing a church-wide fast, and so you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that means I can't eat, or I've only got to drink water. That's a certain kind of fast, and I'm not going to go through all the different fasts. There's partial fasts, there's absolute fasts, there's different things like that. Here's the easiest way to know how you need to fast. What is God asking you to put aside so you will pay more attention to him? Okay. Now, that could not be food. That could be Facebook. That could be TV. That could be YouTube. That, I don't know what it is in your life, but there's something that is distracting you from God. And sometimes it can be food. Sometimes it can be things like that because it's affecting your health. It's, it's affecting, um, you know, different things in your life. And so you're, you're disconnected from God. And so you have to know. I'm not going to stand here and say you have to give up this, this, and this. It's between you and God. And so, but what is keeping you from paying more attention to him? So here's my suggestion. First, you need to pray and ask God what that is. And I guarantee it's usually the thing you are trying to justify the most. <laughs> Amen? So you're like, mm, I ain't doing that. Well, that's probably what you need to do. All right? Ask yourself this. What is it in my life that has altered the image in which God has created me in? What is it that is damaging your family, your faith, your finances, and your fitness? That's probably what you need to give up this month. Those are the things you should probably give to God and say, not this month. I'm not going to do this. And you might, okay, pastor, what are you going to do? I'll, I'll be transparent with you. And it's not to uh, be woe is me or anything like that. It's evident I have gained about 20 pounds since the beginning of the year. That's not a, it's not a mystery. I like food. I, you know, the devil built a Taco Bell across the street <laughs> from the church. And so um, I am going to be giving up sodas, fast food, uh, as much sugar as I can, breads, things like that. And so uh, because my fitness is very important, I, I believe I have a very healthy marriage. It's not to say that I can't do better in some areas, but um, I believe my relationship with God is pretty strong. Uh, I'm in the Word a lot. Um, I do uh, feel like I need to read more this year, and so I'm going to be reading more books. I already read the Bible a lot, but I'm going to start reading more books and uh, getting some teaching in me from other people. And so I'm reading a book, or I'm about to start to read a book called The Return of the Gods. I talked to you about, about that last night, how we're going to do, do a series in March called Possessing America. And it's all about the spirits of old that are coming back and that are, are repossessing America. Because you can look at possessing one or two ways. You can look at possessing as in taking control of something or giving control of something. And so America has gotten to the place where uh, we are allowing these spirits to return. And so this book has just, 
I haven't even read the book yet. I read, I, I listened to some interviews of the author, and I'm already like, oh my gosh, March, hurry up, you know, as I'm just so excited about it. And you're like, well, why can't we just go ahead and do it? Because God has a way of doing things. And so this month, we're doing the reset button. In February, we're going to uh, redo a series. Remember how we did uh, Let's Get Naked? We're going to redo. A, we're going to do a, a part two to that called "Getting Naked Again," and it's all about um, being vulnerable and opening up uh, to the things of God, to the things of uh, your your spouse, your relationships, your church. And um, then in March, we're going to do "Possessing America," and then in April, we're going to do um, "Postcards from Hell." And so I've already got four series that we've already got planned for this year, and so I'm just so excited when God does stuff like that. And so. Um, just be encouraged and have expectation about what's coming. Amen? So find out what God wants you to fast. Find out what he wants you to do personally. You know, what you and your wife do or what you do doesn't necessarily mean it's what your wife will do and vice versa. And I don't know if we have any kids in here, but let me just say that, you know, intimate relations between you and your spouse is not something you fast unless you're in agreement. Amen? It got quiet in here like a pin drop all of a sudden. And so I've heard people doing that before. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast intimacy. Well, not if you and your husband or your wife haven't agreed on it. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that you have to know between you and God and with your spouse, if it, if it, uh, if it pertains to both of y'all, you need to make sure it's good between both of y'all. Amen? So uh, I just want to throw that out there. So... Um, so uh, what's damaged your family, your faith, finances, all these different things? If you don't have a plan, then you won't see the results that come along with it. Amen? Look at this in 1 Corinthians 9, 26 through 27. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. You got that? I do not run without a definite goal. In other words, have a plan. Have a plan. When do I start my fast, Pastor? You can start it today. You can start it tomorrow, but start it. If you're not prepared today, start it tomorrow. I've already started. We had eggs this morning with no toast, no bread. We normally go get croissants in the morning over here at King's Donuts. King's Donuts is going to lose a lot of money uh, January because we're not going to be there. And so, you know, I've already started. So uh, start as soon as possible because if you don't start, if you don't have a goal, you will not complete it. It says, I, therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave. I make it my slave. There's too many people today, you are a slave to your body. You're a slave to your flesh. And I'm, I'll put myself in that. You know, I, I, I said, well, I'm not going to eat that. But God, that looks good. You know, and, and so we give into our flesh. But Paul's saying here, I make my body my slave. I tell it what to do, not the other way around. So that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not be somehow disqualified or unfit for service. In other words, if we're going to be a witness to others about Christ, shouldn't we have the proof in our own lives to show them as an example? Amen? How can we go preach to a world where we don't look like what we preach? How can we go out there and say, well, you know, God will supply and God will do what he needs to do in your life. And, 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 and you don't even have the faith to believe for the finances and what you have or what you need. You know, you need to be able to uh, be able to speak to the world and show them, look at what God's done in my life. You've got to have a testimony if you're going to tell somebody else what to do. Amen? So, uh, shouldn't we have the proof in our own lives to show them that it's an example? Don't just tell people what to do. Show them how it's done. Otherwise, you will forever find yourselves in the same vicious cycle all throughout your life. In fact, Albert Einstein said this. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I think we've all been there. Haven't we? I mean, I know with me, I'm like, I know I look in the mirror every day and say, God, you're fat. Y'all can laugh. It's okay. I, I, I'm, I just, I, I'm disappointed with my weight. I'm disappointed with where I used to be to where I am now. And so, but if all I do is stand in the mirror and say, man, look what you did to yourself. Or I start doing something about it. 
See, because insanity is staring at myself and saying, oh, someday you're going to be thin. Someday you're going to be thin. Someday you're going to be thin. Someday you're going to be thin, but never doing anything about it. We would love to come and just, you know, I'm, I'm pushing out. I just want to let you all know I'm pushing out, okay? So, but, you know, <laughs> like, Joseph, bring out the wide lens, okay? So, but, you know, we would love to be like, and we're thin again. We would love that. We would love a pill wrapped in chocolate. That takes it all away. But in reality, it takes work in our families, in our finances, in our faith, and in our fitness. It's going to take some work. So I want to bring you part one of our series here today. And it might not be a popular series because you have to actually have to do something. Really, any series, you have to do something. The Bible says don't be just hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. So every single series has something involved with you doing something. It's just a matter if you're going to do it. And I'm, I'm, I don't do this series just so we can, you know, you know, lose a few pounds or anything. I want to see your marriages and your families succeed. I want to see your finances soar. I want to see your faith so built up that you can speak to that mountain and it be removed. I want us to live Every year, every month, every week, every day, every second that God has ordained for our lives. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's why fitness is such a concern of mine. Because God has blessed us with this amazing church, with an amazing congregation. And I want to be around to be able to see what God does. Yes. Amen? Yes. So I want to bring you part one of our series, The Reset Button, with a message called Resetting the Results. Resetting the results. Let's look at this month's uh, theme scripture. With every series, we have a theme scripture in, 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 the, uh, in which the series is based around. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says this. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. But listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring up. Will you not even be aware of it? You know, I've always wondered why it says that. Will you not be aware of it? But as I was praying, I was really thinking about this scripture. Sometimes when new, something new starts, it's not very big. And we miss it. Because we're only looking for the big things. We're only looking for the big opportunities. We're only looking for, you know, uh, God, you know, do this big old thing in my life. And he says, well, we're going to start here. Mm-hmm. Don't you even see it? Yeah. And we're walking around going, God, I thought you were going to do something new this year. I thought you were going to do something great this year. Where is it, God? And he says, it's right in front of you. But how can I trust you with the big if I can't trust you with the small? Right. 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 He says, listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you even aware? of it i will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert now notice that last line i will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert in other words god is ready to start now now in the middle of your despair now in the middle of your discouragement now in the middle of your distress now in the middle of your confusion and, and not knowing what's going on right now he's ready to start the question is are you ready to start God's ready to move are you well maybe next week maybe next month pastor this I can already feel it this we're, we're, we're barely a day in. I can barely. I, I don't think I feel it right now. Maybe next year's my de- my year. You know, we haven't even given twenty twenty three a shot. But God says I've got great things for you now. Let's start now. I'm not waiting for you to get your stuff together. I'm not waiting for you to be perfect. I'm not waiting for you to have all the answers. I want to start now. Question is, are you ready for now? And I can guarantee you, as, men as, as, as much as we started talking about this, uh, this series and fasting and all these different areas, uh, some of y'all have already started forming excuses. Yeah, you have. Well, you know, I, I need this. And I need that. Do you? Do you really? Or no, God will never fix this because it's just been like this forever. But you've never really given him a shot to let him do something. 
Look at this. I wrote this down. We somehow make time for the things we want to do, yet seem to never have enough time to do the things we need to do. We'll find time. We'll find time. We went to the movies the other morning and watched Avatar. You know how long that movie is? That's three and a half hours of basically watching the Blue Man Group in the forest. Three and a half hours. The Way of the Water really should have been called way too long. But, you know, we found time to spend three and a half hours staring at a screen. Now, I'm not downing that. We had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves. It was a good movie. But we find time to do things. Can you find time to improve your family? Can you find time to improve your finances? Can you find time to build your faith? Can you find time to help your fitness? Because many people think like this, and it's probably nobody in this church. I mean, maybe somebody online, because I know our people, they, y'all glow in the dark and walk on water. Y'all are awesome. And, and y'all don't think you know, wrong things. But look at this. Many people think like this. If I had a different job, I'd have more money. Now, the things I'm about to list off here, I will say that there are some exceptions. There are some exceptions, but mainly a large percentage, we, we think like this. If I had a better job, I would have more money. No, you have a great job. You just don't know how to manage your money. If you sat down and you really wrote out, you said, Pastor, is this how this series is going to be the whole month? Yes. yes. I'm going to get in your face and I'm going to tell you the truth. Some of y'all suck at money. Do you know statistically in America, in churches, only 29% of the people tithe? 29%. Not 100% of the people, 29%. How is that? Because we are handling our money wrong. And we are not putting God first in our finances. If we would put our, 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 our God first in our finances, you would see things like you've never seen before. I can't explain it. I don't know how it works. It's a kingdom upside down that just works. Amen. As long as you put God first and you manage your money correct. My God, somebody put pen and paper to, you know, down and make a budget. See where your money's going. So if I had a better job, no, no, you, you need to be faithful at your job. Stop jumping around so much and manage your money better. Well, if I was in a better church, I'd have more faith. Oh, now you're stepping on my ground because you are in an amazing church. But here's the problem with some people. Like I said, nobody here, just those that didn't show up today, we'll talk about them. You're in a great church. You just need to stop acting like a spoiled brat, spoon-fed baby and learn to eat on your own at home. Oh, yeah, we're starting 2023 off great, aren't we? But that's true. Oh, pastor, those series that you do, I just don't get anything out of them. Well, go home and feed yourself. This is dessert. The meal's at home. Take a doggy bag from here and go snack. Come on, somebody get a good scripture in your teeth and come back later and... Woo! I remember what that tastes like right there, baby. Woo! <laughs> but your main feeding time should be at home. Instead, we come and... Pastor, feed me. <laughs> feed... <laughs> feed me we're like a baby just <laughs> you're in a great church if i had more time i could get in better shape now you always make time for what's important to you in the moment and how do i know that because when you get a bad doctor's report you make a lot of time to change some things a lot of time Imagine if we changed things before we got the doctor's report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. here's, here's a big one. It's going to take some maturity. So start to pray, Pastor Joel. No, no. Well, let's see. We have already dealt with finances and church. Or I'm sorry, finances, faith. We've already dealt with fitness. So which one's left? 
If I had a better spouse, I'd be happier. You have an amazing spouse. You just need to start treating them like you did before you caught them. Stop taking them for granted and start having fun with them again. Come on, somebody needs to chase their wife or husband around the house again. You need to go out on date nights again. You need to woo them again. Come on, some of y'all, you need to get back to that, 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 that song that's y'all's. My, 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 mine and Melissa's, I can't sing it. My voice is jacked right now. But that at last, at last, that's our song. And so, you know, you, you need to get back to some things. So stop saying, I, you know, that's, that's the problem with people today. They jump around spouse to spouse to spouse to spouse. They jump backwards to get a younger spouse. And they're thinking all these things will make them happier. No, you just need to respect what you have. Amen? Hmm. I wrote this down. Instead of wondering about what might be possible tomorrow, why don't we start walking in the possibilities of today? Amen? The woulda, shoulda, couldas. No, no, no. Let's do something today. Now, when the new year comes, we, we call uh, for New Year's resolutions. Right? What's your resolution? You'll hear people ask that all the time. Oh, what's your resolution? What's your resolution? And you name off all these things that you know you're probably not even going to touch half of them. You're just trying to make yourself sound good. But, you know, what's the resolution? But I challenge you to take it a step further. Make your resolutions, but get a New Year's revelation. Because with a resolution, we are making a firm decision to do or not to do something in our lives. But with a revelation, it's about finding out why we're making that decision and how it will reset the results in our lives. Why are you doing it? Right. Kind of like the fast you know, this month. Why are you doing it? Is it because I told you to? I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm telling you that God spoke to me, said, January, we're going to have a, a, a church-wide fast here at the EWC. It's going to be for the entire month. It's not just going to be 21 days. It's going to be the entire month. And uh, I'll give you the exact date. We're going to stop uh, Wednesday or next Sunday. I haven't looked at the calendar. But um, why are you doing it? Don't do it because I told you to do it. Do it because you want to see some results in your family, in your faith, in your finances, and your fitness. Do it for the reasons, the revelation that God puts within you. So don't just stop eating Taco Bell. Ask God, why do you want me to stop doing this? Get a revelation and get the right results. Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message of Christ, about Christ in all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Giving thanks through him to God the Father. Did you catch that last part? Do it as a representation, a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And everything that we do this month. And everything that you're giving up. We, we don't go around, the Bible even talks about this. Don't go around like the Sadducees and they're like, oh, I'm fasting. Oh, I haven't had a bean burrito with cheese, no onions. You know, for the last, you know. It says don't come with your face down. But come in worshiping and praising God. Do it as a representative to the Lord. Now, while writing this message, I thought, who in the Bible did we see hit the reset button and hit it hard? And the first one that came to my mind was a man by the name of Jacob. Now, Jacob was the younger brother of Esau, and Jacob bribed Esau at a low point in his life to trade his birthright for a bowl of soup. Must have been a heck of a bowl of soup. Then he pretended to be his brother Esau in order to trick his dying father into giving him the bigger blessing. And due to his deception, Jacob feared for his life and started to run for his life. And so one day God saw that it was time for a reset. Let's look at Genesis 32. It's after Jacob's on the run and God's ready to hit the reset button. But it's up to Jacob whether or not he's going to go forward with it. God's ready to move. God's ready to do something. Remember that scripture we read a while ago? Now, in your wilderness, in your desert, now, Jacob's going to have to make the choice. Do I want change now? 
Or do I want to wait on my own timetable? Look at this, Genesis 32, 24. says, this left Jacob all alone in the camp. He sent his family off uh, to go do some other things. He said, I left him in the camp alone, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. How many know that when you're stubborn, God will do something to break you? That when you're stubborn and said, I want what I want, and that's what Jacob was doing. He was trying to get another blessing that necessarily wasn't his in the moment. God, you know, bless me now. I will not let go until you bless me. Now, stubbornness can be a good thing in some senses. But other times, when, when you get to the place of, God, I'm not going to bend, God says, all right, I'll break you. I'm going to do something to get you to where I need you to be. Genesis 32, it goes on. Then the man said, let me go, for the dawn is breaking. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. Now, Jacob was at a pivotal moment in his life because prior to this, he was going by the name Esau. He was taking on his brother's identity to get what he wanted. The question is, was he going to tell God exactly who he was? Or was he going to give another fake persona, another fake name, another fake uh, avatar, if you will, of of himself and not be true and honest and vulnerable with God and said, this is who I am. What is your name? Jacob replied, Jacob. But you know it was an internal... um, struggle within him because it's very graphic within this this uh, scripture of how they're wrestling and and they're they're tormented and they're coming together and they're what's your name and he's deciding should i tell him or should i not should i say who i am or should i keep deceiving myself and others what should i do what is your name and the struggle of this year, the struggle of last year, what, what point do you come to of revealing who you truly are, revealing what true things need to be changed in your life, or are you going to be exactly who you were last year? Jacob said, my name is God, I don't know if I want to say it. God, I don't know if I want to be honest. God, I don't know if I want people to see me for who I am. What is your name? My name! Is Jacob. God couldn't bless him until he came to the terms of who he truly was. He could have said, I'm Esau. But he identified himself by name and in turn identified what area in his life was in need of a reset. Because not only was he saying, I am Jacob, he was saying, I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. I'm a manipulator. I'm a grabber of what's not mine. He wasn't only saying his name. He was revealing who he was. In 2023, we've got to get to the place of vulnerability with God and stop putting on a mask and, and trying to fool the one that created us. He knows better. He knows who we are. You might fool the people in front of you, but you will not fool the one above you. I am Jacob. I'm a liar. I'm a manipulator. I'm a grabber of what's not even mine. God, change me. See, because the world is all about what do you identify as? But they want you to pull a Jacob and say who you aren't. You know what bothers me about this whole identity thing? I identify as this and I identify with that. The pronouns. God, I hate those. I don't want to be known as she or he. I want to be known as they or them. You know, that takes me back, Joe, to the Bible with a guy that was called the Gathering Demoniac. And it said, what is your name? It said, I'm Legion, for I am many. Today's society and today's generation, don't call me a he, don't call me a she, call me a they, because there are 
many. It's a generation growing up with a Jacob mentality. And God says, show me who you really are. Much like Jacob, we will never truly be able to move forward until we have identified the areas in our life that need to be reset. So in the time we have left here today, I just want to quickly help you get some new results. Three ways to see new results. By rebooting, restarting, and resetting. Number one, some of us need to reboot. What is a reboot? It's when a computer is forced to shut down to help repair the system when it's unresponsive, moving slowly, or has connectivity issues. Many times the enemy will use our past, our present, and what we feel is a lack of a future to discourage us, which causes us to be unresponsive to the word, stagnant to his plan over our lives, and even a loss of connectivity with the Holy Spirit. God says you need a reboot. And can I tell you that, you know, we think of that in the spiritual sense, but can I tell you that God really wants to reboot some of us and he probably needs to reboot some of us i wrote this down in the process of getting focused you will eventually have to confront that which blurred your vision you can't just say i want to leave that behind and go forward you have to deal with what's trying to bring you down you have to deal with 2022 before you can accept 2023 Or it'll be the same vicious cycle, like we said a while ago, insanity of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But really, you're going to get the same results over and over and over again. Isaiah 43, 2 through 3 says, When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up, for the flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In other words, I never leave you and I never forsake you. You're going to have hard times and you're going to have things that you go through, but I'm right there with you. A reboot's not a scary thing. I just want to help you reconnect. I just want to help you be responsive again to the word of God. I just want you to be able to hear my voice. Stop moving so slow. God's like, man, we got some things to do. We got some things we got to get moving on. You don't understand how time, the the, the time is short. You don't understand, man, the, the, the angels are getting their lips ready. Come on, to blow that trumpet. Come on, guys, let's, let's, let's what do they call it? Perking the lips or whatever. Getting ready. The trumpet's about to sound. He said, we got some things to do. I don't need churches that are unresponsive, moving slow, and not connected to what I have for them. Because the only thing that's going to help this world is the local church. That's why we don't hide behind the walls. That's that's why we plan things like going to pay some, some grocery money on people just to show, come on, just be the love. Just be the love. And even if we don't have events, go out there and do it yourself. Be love. Come on, order too many chicken fingers. I know they didn't do that on purpose, but you know, when the enemy tries to screw things up, turn it around for his glory. Amen. Some of us need a reboot. Come on, some of us need a restart. What is a restart? It's, it's not as hard as a reboot. But it's when the computer ends all pending input and output operations due to a virus or a bug. You know, know, those things that throughout the week kind of just invade your life. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read my word. I don't want to be nice to anybody. You know, it's just little things. You know, even sickness. Even sickness. You know, I could have came in here and said, Pastor Joel, man, I could have called him last night and said, hey, batter up. You know, and he'd been ready. He's always ready. And, and so, you know, but I'm not going to let a little bug or a virus or something keep me from doing what God's called me to do. But so many times that, that's how we are. We're just like, oh, I'm down for the count. You never know who God wants to touch by you pressing on. Amen. Many times we tend to surround ourselves with too much negativity, drama, hurt, pain, broken promises, when all we need is a restart. Because the enemy wants to shut you down totally instead of restarting you. 
That's why suicide rate is so high right now. Because a restart means get new friends, change the way you respond, don't be the match to someone else's gasoline. In other words, there's some work you've got to do. But there's, there's a generation rising up that says, that's too difficult, I'll just end it all. And that's the devil's plan. But God says, i got to restart for you. Come on, let's restart some stuff. Let's get rid of some people in your life and bring some new people in. Stop hanging out where you used to hang out and start hanging out in the church. Start hanging out with good people. Start hanging out with people that will influence you better. You know, and that can go for adults too. That's not just uh, teenagers, young adults. That's anybody. Anybody. That, that's me. You, you don't know how picky I am about who I hang out with. Picky I am. Joe called me the other day. I said, no, I don't want to hang out with you. No, <laughs> Stop calling me. I don't want to be your friend. The worst thing we can say is, they make me so mad. They made me do this. They made me do that. Can I tell you that nobody controls you unless you hand them the remote? Amen? Amen. It's when you hand them the remote. It's like when I hand Melissa the remote, I know I'm going to be stuck watching Hallmark. (laughs) Zig Ziglar said this, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start in order to be great. Start now. Start now. Start today with something, whether it be in your family, your finances. You know, if you're having a rough marriage, you know, if you're not too tired, you know, take your wife or your husband out to eat. Go do something. Go spend some time together. Yeah. You know, start realizing, ah, oh, this irritates me. Man. Married couples that act like divorce is just the answer. When we should really be looking at this as this is for life. Let's stop wasting our time yelling at each other, arguing over stupid things. Let's just do life together. What made you fall in love with them to begin with? Find that again. We're going to talk about more more of that in families and next month with the other series. But let's, let's realize that God has blessed you with a spouse that you can do life with and have a beautiful journey with. And stop wasting your time. You're going to get in your 50s and your 60s and look back and say, man, I wasted my marriage. I wasted my marriage. Me and Melissa went and did a um, thing the other day. It was for a friend of ours. Um, He has a production studio thing. And um, they're doing something for Valentine's Day. So they asked some couples that they knew that had been married for a while. The Robleses did it. Uh, Me and Melissa did it. We've been married for 21 years. And we just sat there and just, they just asked us questions about what makes a successful marriage? What, you know, what do y'all do to stay fresh or, or whatever, you know, however they asked us, I don't remember what they asked us. And, you know, it was just, man, just laugh yeah. together. Yeah. Just have fun yeah. together. Don't let the petty things, those viruses, those bugs, those, that junk that the enemy just throws in your life to, 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 to make your marriage suck. Because you know it's all the enemy. It's not God. So don't waste it. Don't waste what God has blessed you with. Some of y'all need to look at your... I'm going to talk to the men right now. Some of y'all need to look at your wife and fall in love with her all over again. You need to look deep in her eyes. Deep in her eyes and see... Exact, come on, man, we know... You know, and you too. And this is the problem. Men look at the women, their wives and say, well, she don't look like she used to. Well, you don't either. Yeah. You used to be football man. You're like, what's for dinner now? You know? <laughs> Come on, let's grow old together. You know when you're truly in love? When you look at your spouse and she hasn't changed a day. I look at my spouse. I look at Melissa. She hasn't changed a day. She's just as beautiful today as she was when I met her. 
That's when you know you're looking with the right lens. Galatians 3, 1 through 2. I'd be like, no, híjole. <laughs> oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly, publicly betrayed as crucified. Let me ask you this. Did you receive the spirit of works of the law or by hearing with faith? Paul's saying, guys, who jacked you up? Who brainwashed you? You saw, you saw Jesus crucified on the cross. You saw the empty tomb. You saw it. Why are you believing a lie? Now, now you might not have been there, but you've seen what God's done in your life. You've seen how he's moved. You've seen the miracles. You've seen how he's brought you from there to here. You've seen the power of God in your life. Who has bewitched you to think that God won't do it again? Hmm. Sometimes we just need a restart. A restart. Come on. Uh, a, 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 a revision. Come on. Look at it again with different eyes. Just like with your spouse. You know, same thing with God. Let's look at God from a different angle. Stop looking at, 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 at God in the sense of, well, you never do what I want you to do. Here's another perspective. God loves you so much, he didn't allow that to happen in your life. It's all in the lens you look at it. Last one, last one. Is this helping anybody? Reboot, restart. Some of us need just a, a reset. What's a reset? It's when the computer is set back to its factory settings. It's erased of everything that didn't originally come with the manufacturer of the system. Some of us have gone so far and so deep that the only way to get back to God is a reset. Good. And what's that mean? Some of us just need to go back to the basics. Yeah. Can I say that some people have just gotten so full of religion yeah. that you've forgotten who God truly is? That you've forgotten what the word truly says? That it, it's time to just go back to the basics so we can uh, once again understand the power of God, the love of God, my God, the simplicity of who Christ is? Just by going back to the basics. Because we try to figure everything out. You will never figure out God. So when you're too busy doing all that, you're just allowing and opening doors in your life of, of uh, uh, mysticism and uh, different religions and cults and all these different things because you're looking for the answer. When Jesus is that answer. And you can't explain him. You can't figure him out. All he asks is you do is love him. Believe him. And know that he has your best interest in heart. I wrote this down. The enemy knows if he can infect a piece of you, then he has a greater chance to control the rest of you. Well, See, we just think the devil just wants to possess us. Just blah, 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 blah. Just possess, no, he just, he, just wanna, he just wants a little piece of you. Just a little piece of you. Because if he can get a little piece of you, he can get the rest of you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anybody is in Christ that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior. He is a new creature. Come on. He's being reset. Reset. Reborn. Renewed by the Holy Spirit. Old things, the previous moral and, and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, here we go, all things are new. They're new. Amen. When we have a reset. When we have a reboot. Good. When we have a restart yeah. in our lives. And can I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are. We all need, at some points in our life, some type of reboot, restart, and reset in our lives yeah. if we want to truly see new results. Because what happens is we get stagnant in areas. Yeah. We get stagnant in our faith. We get, you know, you used to, when you came to the altar, man, you, you accepted Christ in, into your life, man, you were ready to charge hell with a water pistol. You pray for anything that moved. And now you're just walking along and you're like, ah, God will deal with it. You know, oh, the devil's taking me out. What happened to that warrior spirit inside of you that said, how dare you? 
How dare you come against my life? How dare you come against my family? How dare you come against my finances and my faith? Where's the church that used to stand up? Let me tell you where that church is. It's right in front of you here in 2023 that we will not take it from the enemy. We will take a stand and we will reset some things in our life and we will bring our families back, our finances back, our faith back, and our fitness back. We will do some things. But you've got to make a choice to do it now. And not sit back and hope it happens. You know, um, months ago, I think it was last year, something happened to me physically. I was hurting. I had pain in my gut. Come to find out I was taking too much ibuprofen. So I don't take ibuprofen anymore. But I was having pains in my gut. And so I took... I went to the doctor. She gave me a prescription, a terrible prescription. It was just, it made me loopy. It made me everything. But it decreased my appetite. And I literally lost 12 pounds in eight days. I was eating half a sandwich. I was forcing down half a sandwich. But you know what? I was like, ooh, hey, dang, you're looking sexy. You know, hey. <laughs> but you know what? I wouldn't want to go through that again just to lose some weight. The same thing with you can't just hope something happens. I'm not praying I get sick again and they prescribe that medicine to me so I can. No, no. I, I need to do something. I need to create a habit in my life. Yeah. You need to create a habit in your life with your finances, with your family, with your faith, with your fitness. In every single area, we need to do something. Because if you don't do something, you'll keep getting the same results. Yeah. Let's reset the results Good. and do something different this year. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. Man, we pray that this message was a blessing to you. We pray that it did something inside of you, encouraged you, and inspired you for greatness in the things of God. If you're ever in the Corpus Christi area, come check us out at the EWC. We're located at 6801 Weber Road. And if you feel like God is calling you to be a blessing to this ministry, go on our website, theexchangewc.org. There'll be some instructions on there to help you out. Otherwise, we love that you joined us. We'll see you next time right here at the EWC.